let us all that we can to build a better future. All right. I want to add in my commentary or at least my thoughts, and I won't be playing the videos, but I think they're more or less get to the same point. Peter Dow was interviewed by both Brianna Joy Gray and Tim Black. Uh, this comes with the aftermath of Sabrina, who did her interview with uh, Peter Dow, I believe, last week. Now, obviously, the Cornell West campaign is sticking to its decision of having Peter Dow um, be the campaign manager. I have severe doubts in his ability to be an effective leader. Now, what did all three interviews uh, have in common? I think I have a better understanding of who Peter Dow is. Maybe he truly is sincere. But I wouldn't want to be in the same room with him. The actions that he committed towards progressives and third parties um, still resonate. Still resonate. And yes, people can change. But in my opinion, if you're truly going to lead the fight all the way, I have to see it. I want to see it to the very end. I want to see the Green Party get 5% votes. I want to see them actually get a, a more than that on the electoral on, on, on election night. I want to see the Green Party and, yes, the Libertarians, just so it be consistent because I want to see both parties succeed. But I have some severe questions in regards to just how effective Peter Dow can truly be. All three interviews and the in individuals who interviewed Peter Dow did their job to the best of their ability. I understand who Peter Dow is. But I can't put my trust in him. He's a campaign manager, yes. But now it's up to Dr. Cornell West to effectively not only lead his team, but to make sure everyone is working efficiently. The concern that I have, though, is, is the matter of fact of where this campaign is going. And I guess opening shots, first impressions or lasting impressions. There were two protests that took place over the weekend, last weekend, to be more precise. The UAW worker strike and then, of course, the climate change march that was in New York City. Dr. Cornell West was at the climate change march. And yes, the planet and stopping pollution is very important. But this election is going to be about the economy. It's going to be about the dollars. It's not about anything else. It's going to be about our wallets. It's going to be about how we're going to survive. This is where this election will go. That's priority number one. Everything else is going to be secondary. Because as this economy keeps on getting worse and worse, as Americans are struggling day in, day out just to make ends meet, the dollars are going to matter more. And the video coverage of Dr. Cornell West there was mediocre and lackluster. And I'm being kind with those words. It doesn't inspire confidence in me that the campaign manager didn't have Dr. Cornell West truly have a, have a longer video or that it wasn't promoted on the Green Party social media platform as much. Again, red flags to where when I hear the criticism of maybe Peter Dow is – well, maybe he's purposely doing this. Maybe he's still on a DNC payroll. That's an accusation. That's not the first time we've ever seen the DNC play some shady tricks. But in all three interviews, Dow has said that, oh, I'm going to be consistent. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I, I've changed. I've changed. But I still remember 2016. I still remember Philly. I remember what happened there. And I'm rather shocked that Dr. Jill Stein and Dr. Cornel West seem to have forgotten or let it be water under the bridge, which is a fool's mistake. I want to pull up this video and I want to give a huge shout out to Compton J because Kashama Sawant did a video statement. And I just want to read the quote here. I do think that this is a mistake by Dr. Cornell West campaign. This decision has acted to divide West current base of supporters. It's important to ask the question, why put someone who was until only a short while ago with the Democratic Party at the very helm of an independent left campaign? I do call into question why that decision was made. And the excuse so far, or at least the statement so far, is that 
Dr. Corona West and Jill Stein view him as somebody who can get the job done. That being a campaign manager is hard work. Well, newsflash, life is hard work. There's there's a lot of things you have to do that's hard work. But because of this action from Dr. Cornell West, even now I have to look at who I really want to vote for and whether or not the West campaign will go all the way. Because I have that fear, and I shared this with do dissidents, RBN, uh, Craig Jardula. I even shared this with my colleague Daniel. I, I fear in the back of my head that Dr. Cornell West is going to be advised to end his campaign and throw support behind Biden or whoever the, or whoever the Democrat nominee is going to be because Trump. Boogie, boogie, boogie. So let's play this video here. And I want to share it with all of you. As I mentioned earlier, we recorded this interview with Cornel West shortly before his campaign announced that Peter Dow would be his new campaign manager. And that has led to a real debate on the left and many concerns being raised by supporters of the campaign. For those who don't know, Peter Dow is a former Democratic Party strategist who, among other things, played a key public role in the 2016 Hillary Clinton campaign during which he repeatedly made political attacks on Bernie. Again, I remember 2016. I'm pretty sure all of you remember 2016. And Peter Dow was there. And look, even in the interview, Brianna Joy Gray brought it up. I just want to say this. Brianna Joy Gray is a fantastic interviewer. She's a, she's a great host. She, could, she does great work, especially uh, triggering people like Jane Cougar or Dallas Jones. Um, but the fact that, I guess, forgiveness or, I guess, mutual respect has happened, I don't think I could do that. Because I remember speaking to Bernie Sanders delegates and volunteers. I remember it being inside the Wells Fargo Center. I saw more civility at Trump rallies than I did at the, at the Wells Fargo. You would expect there would be peace and love, like the Democratic propaganda was saying. Oh, there was peace and love and hugging all around when Hillary was named the nominee. No, there wasn't. No, no, no. No, there was not. Because I know what I saw. And I remember the stories. Peter, you want to talk about that? Sanders, Peter Dow has since publicly broken with the Democratic Party and supported Bernie Sanders in 2020. It's totally understandable that activists and working people who've been repeatedly sold out have raised concerns about this decision by the West campaign. For one, not only is Dow's break with the Democratic establishment relatively recent, just in the last few months, he was the campaign manager of yet another Democratic Party campaign, Marianne Williamson's. I do think this is a mistake by the Cornell West campaign, in particular because this decision has acted to divide West's current base of supporters. The concerns that have been raised have a real basis in reality. It's not clear what Dow's politics are at this point or where he is headed. And it's important to ask the question, as many have, why put someone who was until only a short while ago with the Democratic Party at the very helm of an independent left campaign, even if their break from the Democrats is genuinely intentioned. However, in our approach to these questions, we also cannot afford to lose sight of the fact that the Cornell West campaign is offering a sorely needed left alternative to the utterly bankrupt candidacies of Biden and Trump and to the two parties of big business. In the absence of the West campaign, working people have no real options in this election, and this will lead to many of them not voting at all, or voting for Trump's dangerous right-wing populism. That's where I'm at thinking at this entire campaign right now, especially with Peter Dow, because again, I, I, could, I could see it playing out where the Greens just drop out or they just fizzle away. It's not the first time I've seen the Green Party literally shite the bed. They've done it before. The Illinois Green Party has done it numerous times. They've been very mediocre, in my opinion. And I know there's a lack of resources and, you know, media support and everything else. But after a while, it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Oh, woe is me. Stop being sad and actually do something. Then as for Trump, look, 
dangerous right wing policies. Yeah, okay, fine, but that's no, and it's no different than <clears throat> Biden's or anyone else in the Democratic Party. Okay, so there really isn't a difference between Trump and Biden. It's both the same. We're all going to get screwed up the wazoo. I just don't see the fight. Uh, and I just have so many more questions of why this decision was made. Who thought it was a good idea? The fact that you think he has the experience to lead when he has a track record of failure. Now, I understand, hey, we're not always going to win the championship. We're not going to win the game all the time. But the Kerry campaign, the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Marianne Williamson campaign, being part of the Bernie campaign. You know. It's kind of pathetic at this point. It's really it's really sad. And I just can't look at somebody with a horrible track record and think, oh, yeah, you're a winner. I don't think Bernie Sanders made all the right personnel decisions either. But my main concern with Bernie Sanders was not his staffing decisions, but his capitulation to the Democratic Party in endorsing Biden. And since then, how he has provided cover to Biden and the Democrats' ongoing betrayals of working people. Right now, we need to see how things develop with the Cornell West campaign, including with Peter Dow. In my view, the main questions facing the campaign, as we raised in this interview, is whether Cornell West will consistently and clearly campaign on his working class demands, whether he will run all the way to November 2024 rather than endorse Biden, and whether he will give his campaign a mass grassroots character, including by organizing mass rallies. And I was not entirely happy with Dr. West's response to us on the question of organizing rallies. He first said that they need to, quote unquote, pace themselves. I think there is an urgency on this question. By this time in the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2015, as I said, more than 100,000 people had attended his mass rallies and many more had heard about the program of demands Bernie was running on. The clock is ticking here and we urgently need mass grassroots participation. The best way for us to keep West's campaign accountable to working people is for us to give it a grassroots character, to get involved, and to speak out publicly against mistakes like this one. Yeah. Again, um, obviously, please check out Kasama Sawant's um, YouTube channel and be sure to check out her channel in regards towards her interview with Dr. Cornell West. And look, um, this is the time where you do want to start uh, hitting the iron while it's still hot. Okay. If you can't rally more people to attend your event, and if you're going to niche events and let's face it, that climate March is a niche event. You're not going to inspire voters. This election is all about the economy. It's going to be about the dollars. It's going to be about how people are going to make ends meet. I've said this before. In all three of those interviews, Peter Dow did not have the aura of confidence to be an effective campaign manager. He might have changed, and that is true. Maybe that's the case. I just don't see him being that firm commander going to areas where there are union strikes happening, where the workers are out there. Because climate marches and protests aren't going to do it. It's going to be a matter of reaching out to voters that need to hear what your economic plan is going to be. And yes, I get that the Greens, the independents, there's a lot working against them. But you have to have this infrastructure set up. And I said this not only after 2016, when we first started Hard Lens Media, but even after 2020. The independent parties need to start building their infrastructure after the election or get it started bef just before it even happens, right? At least two years, three years in advance, setting up the ground game, setting up a team, looking at people who could be your best representative, your best nominee. And always it seems to be the last minute or lackluster individuals. This is something that third parties need to learn. And I'm not seeing that from the West campaign. I hope I'm proven wrong. I would like to see them succeed. So the only thing I could tell you, my viewing audience, is your decision for 2024 is yours and yours alone. 
I won't tell you how to vote because even I'm now having reservations on who to vote for. Maybe this is my last election where I'm going to participate. Uh, Misty Winston is correct. Electoral politics are BS. I still believe in citizen ballot initiatives and voting for that. But I am just tired. I'm tired of having hope build up and taken away. And the terrible decision making that's being done by people who I like to think are smart. But obviously can't read the room. Peter Dow with his past. And even though. He said in the interview, other people said, hey, being a campaign manager is tough. Then get someone new in the game, coach. Get 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 that get that new star athlete, that new MVP guy. Get get him in. Or her. We need something new. Not something old and that has failed. And the West campaign, at least where it stands right now, is on a trajectory of just being mediocre. Because that climate change march video was it wasn't good. All right. That's that's basic level entry kind of stuff. You got to have that stuff ready. And as a campaign manager, Peter Dow should have should have been on point on that. I know Do Dissidents did a great breakdown on that uh, event as at RBN. I'm not inspired. So vote how you feel like. All I know is on election night, I'm eating a ribeye steak and feasting on the liberal tears. That's the only thing I'm going to take away from that night.